My name is Carrie Dvorsky. I am the operations coordinator at the NWTC Artisan and Business Center. This is the April session of our In Artist Journey series where we feature artists, um, business professionals, community organizations, anything that kind of benefits artists in our community. Um, this month we had originally scheduled a couple of artists who were working in a joint studio together, but they could no longer participate. So Miss um, Chrissy Zegers and I were having a couple of conversations conversations about some other things and I was learning a bit more about her and her work teaching for our corporate training department at NWTC um, and her um, own individual business. So um, instead of trying to introduce you, Chrissy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is um, Chrissy Zegers and I kind of feel like I resonate with Carly a little bit when she was just talking about having lots of different things that she sort of uses at different times. I'm kind of like that. Like I have a background um, working primarily in corporate, kind of managing big teams, working in primarily um, guest services. And then I also um, owned a yoga studio for a long period of time. So that whole mind, body, spirit part definitely comes through. I am a certified um, coach. So I help people from that perspective to kind of bring their businesses or even bring their life, kind of depending on what they reach out to me. I help them sort of bring it to that next level and help them discover what's really important to them as they move through that. And again, I also work in CTED, so teaching um, corporate training and development in various capacities um, to various types of companies as well. So I kind of think I'm a, a jack of all trades that sort of uses their skills Whatever superpower is needed in that moment, I will pull that one out and that will be what I use. I love that. And, you know, I think you are so well-rounded and I feel like every time you and I sit down and have a conversation, I've got notes and ideas sparking and like, oh, who could we work with for this or who, how can you help this person? So I am so thankful for you being here tonight. Um, like I said earlier, there's probably going to be just a few of us here having a very intimate conversation. So anybody on the call, feel free to chime in, drop any kind of questions or chats in the chat box if you prefer it. I am happy to read those out loud and kind of um, keep this really casual and kind of a discussion-based thing. So Chrissy, where would you like to start? What do you want to talk about first? Man, we could start with all the things. But, you know, I think really one of the biggest reasons I came on here is helping artists with their journey and kind of diving in and exploring their business. And I've, I've worked with um, a, a number of artists, primarily in more of like the photography sector, but I've definitely dabbled with people that kind of do various types of things as well to start taking a look at their business and discovering what's important for them and how they want to move that forward. And when I say that, everybody has a defin different definition of what forward means. Some people, it's truly just like tapping into that deeper level of creativity and just getting back into the flow of being an artist again. Other people, it is, it's taking their business to the next level. Perhaps they want to grow it um, to a point where that's providing from them from a professional standpoint. I've also had people that I've worked with that are looking at it as more like retirement plans. Like when I'm done, we're in the workforce, I really wanna step in. Um, and focus more on my my artist business as, you know, an in, I don't want to call it an enhanced hobby because it, they want it to be more than that. But now they're kind of working in maybe more of that hobby. And then they want to slowly advance it to be the thing that's going to be providing them their income down the road. That's awesome. I love that. And, you know, you and I talked a little bit about um, what the steps are, kind of what journeys look like for artists. And I think I remember us talking about how in our residency program, every artist is on a different path, right? Every artist business looks completely different, whether it is photography or fine art or another creative industry, it all looks really different. Are there some kind of commonalities, like common things you would recommend across the board for people? You know, yes and no. <laughs> so what I think can be really, really important for them is one, to sit down and take a look at what's truly important and what do you want to do with it. So if it is, hey, I just want to spend more time being artistic, taking a look at that, you know, I, I hate, sometimes I hate using the word goals because <laughs> there can be such a stigma that goes with it, but, but it is, it's kind of like, well, what's important to you? What do you want to be your goal with this? Um, use whatever fancy word is the right word for you, but what, what do you want that to be? And then starting to take a look at, if I want this here, 
What are the steps that I can start putting into place that will help me go forward? So I think that that's kind of the consistent part that goes across the board. How people apply that is going to be very individual. And when I've worked with people, a lot of people will get very hung up in the, but how do I do, you know, the, the hows of everything. And instead of actually moving and making progress, they'll get so caught up in well, but somebody told me I'm supposed to be posting five times a day on my my page, and I just I don't have time to do that. So then they they just get too hung up in that and they don't progress forward. So when I when I sit down with people and we talk about mapping out a plan and figuring out how to move forward, it's all about one what's important to you, what what is what does that look like, and then starting to look at well what's your capacity to get there. So if if it is you can post five times more power to you. But if that doesn't resonate and align for you, then let's take a look at what's actually, what are those small steps that are going to keep you moving forward instead of holding you back? And I think there's some, you know, just even misconceptions. So I'm going to say this, and there's probably going to be a bunch of business people that are going to come at me and be like, oh, this is how you have to do it. I really definitely think that everybody, if they're coming across in an authentic way that resonates with them, they will find the right people to help support their business. Uh, yes, we can look at the key ingredients to successfully market your business. If it doesn't feel authentic and you show up in it in a way of feeling like you have to do that thing, it's going to show up like that instead of you really shining and showing what your passions are and why your business can be really important to you. So there's a lot of of like diving deep that I do with a lot of my clients to really discover well, what is important to you. What do you think your, what's your capacity to grow whatever it is? What type of time do you have? Your resources that you have? And from there, start making a plan. But I really do think it's always finding those little steps that will keep propelling you forward instead of holding you back. And I love that, you know, it, it really is going to be different for every single person, right? It's going to be even minute differences to like crazy 180 degree differences for each person. I think something I've noticed too with our residency program is that sometimes people set a goal and they feel like they have to accomplish it in order to get to the next one. When really, as you're progressing towards that goal, the goal might completely change. You might learn something about yourself or learn something about your practice or your business that completely shifts your perspective. And then the goal has to change too. It's not set in stone. It's something you set for yourself. Well, so this is this is the fun part with working with some of all of all of these things. So whether again you're working at, at it from an artistic business perspective, or you're just working on it to be like a good person perspective, bringing some awareness and self reflection into that can be really important. I've had people that have come to me and they're like, "I've put all this time and effort, and I just don't think I want to do it anymore." Okay, fantastic looking at, well, why don't you think you want to do it? Is there something else that would bring you more joy? And, and doing exactly like you said, realign with that. It's interesting how sometimes our societal norms start stepping in our way, again, of keeping us from moving forward. Typically, we've always been told, well, set your goal here. Now do everything in your power to reach that goal. And to your point, like some redirection may be more important in order to for you to actually hit the ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal may not be selling a hundred pieces of whatever the thing is. Your goal may be, hey, I wanna do my art to feed my soul, to provide for my family. So the goal may not be the specific thing. It may be more of that like emotional feeling connection, what doing that serves you instead of, I need to do a hundred pieces of whatever the thing is. So it can be, it can be, reassessing it and even diving deeper into that goal. Like, why is that super important to you? It may not be what you really thought it was. So I love that you brought that up. Redirection, yes, for sure. And not getting, like, I have a couple clients that are, that will get, they, they like won't want to talk to me. And I'll be like, well, why, what's going on? And they'll be like, well, I didn't really do anything since our last call. Okay. Like, but I, I was just afraid to tell you that because if you talked about me doing this and I haven't done anything. And so even that, like, if you get stuck or stymied, like, ask for help, ask for support. If you didn't do anything, well, let's discover why. And then if it was too overwhelming of a thing, 
break it down even smaller. So sometimes I think that that gets in the way as well. Like, we'll say I want to do this step and this wash of overwhelm will come up and then nothing happens because we're so overwhelmed by this, the step that we thought was small, but all of a sudden it's holding us way back. So yeah, <laughs> redirect. <laughs> For sure. I think that's a great point. I actually just wrote down self-reflection and check in. I think that's huge, right? I think some artists and some creative people, myself included, like I'm sitting in my studio right now, I'll get so caught up in what I'm doing that I completely lose perspective of the big picture, right? I'm like, this process isn't working or this thing isn't coming out the way I want it to. And then I spend the entire time kind of spiraling on that when really you could walk away from it, right? <laughs> you could take that week off. You could take a break and not be productive productive and it can right. be really good for you. Well, and that's too, again, even how we can redefine our definitions. So what does being productive truly mean to you? Does it mean sitting in your studio and having to create this stuff? Or does it mean taking a step away for a couple of days because all of a sudden an epiphany will happen? And instead of spending 80 hours in your studio, it's like, ah, this is only going to take me, you know, whatever this time is and bam, you're, you're, you've already moved steps forward. And th that's, that's progress. That's success, you know, is being able to notice when you're in that, that funk or whatever that is, that void <laughs> where nothing is happening and allowing yourself that place to step back and reflect on, all right, I'm in a void. I'm just going to, I'm going to go do something else for a bit. Resettle your mind instead of getting caught up in Sometimes I'll talk to my clients, study it and caught up in all the details of it. Take a step back and just shut it off for a minute and then revisit it when you feel inspired. For sure. I am so looking forward to like nice weather maybe this weekend because I feel like sometimes when I'm caught up in spending too much time thinking about things, that's when it's hard, right? Like that's when it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. So if I can step outside or go do something that takes my mind off of it, sometimes that's when the best ideas happen. Or when you do get a little moment of clarity of like, this is what I want. This is my redirection or this is my big picture goal. Then, you know, you've, you've kind of stepped outside of that like constraint of like, I need to get this done and kind of can have that, that moment. Yeah. It's always that balance, right? It's that balancing of, you know, one, do you need to truly get something done? Or are you telling yourself you have to get something done so you stress all out? Like if you're working for a client, you probably have to get something done. If you're working for yourself and it's just this creative thing that's flowing, that's more for you. Like the getting it done is really about when you want to do it for yourself. And even, you know, what you were talking about, like getting outside, I rec recommend for everybody to understand those places, those things things, those, whatever you want to call them that help to provide inspiration, clarity, kind of like I do this all the time while I'm driving, which is probably not the greatest place to be doing this. But for some reason, like I get these epiphanies that start flying through when I'm in the car by myself. No, no, nothing. It's just me in my car with quiet, <laughs> which doesn't happen very often, but it's, it's perfect. And oftentimes too, I will also get the same thing when I go out in nature and I'm just having those moments where I can, instead of having to reflect upon all of the world's things, I can actually just take a moment and pause. So I recommend that for anybody, especially those people that are in like this world of, you know, constant creativity is where are those places that you can almost find your center and allow for the space for some different things to come in. It's funny that you said the car because I drove home from the office about mid afternoon this afternoon and the sun was so bright and I had that, like I have about a half hour drive and it was so nice. I was like, oh my gosh, the sun is shining. I'm by myself. I have this quiet moment between some chaos at work and then coming home to do this. And it was like that perfect balance of like, I'm really glad I did this for myself. I needed this little, little break, this little intentional break to reset my mind and be able to really focus on what we're doing here tonight in this conversation. Yeah. No, absolutely. You should, my, all of a sudden I start leaving myself like voice memos, like, all right, remember, blah, 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 blah. you know, this is, this is the next thing. And like, 
my, I don't necessarily express myself from an artistic outward expression, but I offer tons of classes and all these different things. And so for me, that level of inspiration is like, ooh, put something together on blah, 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 whatever the thing is. Those are like the types of inspirations I get while I'm driving in my car. For sure. It's that moment, I think, away from the work, right? That moment your brain doesn't have to be thinking about something that all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I've got all these ideas and all these fun things I should be doing. And um, like you said, if it's genuine and authentic and resonates with you, you're going to have a better outcome, right? Or a better, I don't want to say product. I don't really love that word, but uh, a better outcome, I think is a better word. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. When you start forcing stuff to happen, you know, like it feels that way. <laughs> it feels like it's forced. It feels like I, I talk to my clients a lot about using the words like the should and the have tos, like the energy of the should and the have tos doesn't feel as great as the, Ooh, I cans. And you know, that type of, that type of feeling. So anytime I feel like that forced, like I have to force it, it's like, Oh, let's, let's, let's let it flow instead of forcing the thing to happen. So we've talked a lot about what I thought we were going to talk about tonight, but when you were talking earlier about your, um, and stop me if you think this is too much of a curveball, but your experience okay. with guest services and customer service, is there some feedback you would give to artists about working with their customers and their clients, some kind of general wisdom to impart? I think that your background, and I know I know a little bit because we met when you were working at a different place, and um, your background with customers and guests, I think, is super invaluable, and I wonder if that would resonate a little bit with our audience. Yes, I'm going to kind of layer this in a couple different ways, so steer me to whatever direction that you feel I may need to go. From a marketing perspective, we're going to, I'm going to have you look at it in that capacity. So when you're, you're looking at trying to identify who your client is. Sometimes I find that a lot of times um, some creatives that I've worked with will get really stuck in thinking that their product, whatever they're offering, needs to be appealing to the masses. And that's not always the case. Like depending on what your point of view is, that may not be the case. So getting to know truly who your client is, who, who are those types of people that you're you're targeting, that you're identifying. Um, I taught a customer service class today and we were talking all about your avatar. <laughs> like, and people kind of looked at me crazy, but if you pay attention to some different marketing things, they all, they'll, they'll talk a lot about like, identify who your avatar is. And basically that, who is your ideal client? Who are the types of people that you're serving? Are you, you know, are you, depending on, again, what type of medium that you're doing or what type of create creative things that you're coming into, you may target your clients a little bit differently. So, you know, for me, I, I've recommended to artists, like, have an opportunity to actually interview somebody that's purchased your stuff. Ask them some questions. Why did this appeal to you? That's going to help you from a marketing perspective in terms of bringing more people in for the people that you serve. Like, if you're someone that draws cartoon characters, that may not be appealing to all of the same people. Or if it, if you're targeting more of a, a kid market, that's gonna be different than somebody that's 85 years old. That's probably not gonna be your target demographic. So understanding that customer from a marketing perspective can be really helpful for you to not waste a bunch of your time targeting the wrong person. So that's kind of my lens on it from a marketing perspective. Now, when we start layering it in from a one-to-one -one customer service, a lot of it still applies. Like you have to understand who your person is. I always, this it's, it's a balance because when you're an artist and you're sharing your gifts, there are certain boundaries that I think are important for you to also honor. If somebody is asking you to do something that is beyond your scope or beyond what you feel comfortable doing, or it's just not your thing, I think it's valuable as well to, you know, to have that boundary within yourself and identify that. When you're dealing with just customer service on a, a normal basis, I think there are important things that, that can be important. What your follow-up time is, you know, what your quality of, you know, obviously the quality of your work should speak for itself, but some of those little things that um, can be important from like that business side of what are those little things that you can do that go above and beyond for your customer? What is your follow through and your communication with your customer? How are you helping to service their needs? 
while honoring your boundaries, because that can definitely come into play as well. Those are some ways to think about that part of the experience, because to be honest with you, they all play together. The customer service side feeds into selling your art. It's part of the process. It, it has to happen. The other thing I think that can be really a, a way for people to engage with their customers is share their story on why their art's important. Um, I've had this conversation with um, some other artists and it's like, tell people about your process. Let them know why this is important to you. You know, get in that emotional side of it as well when you're expressing what you're doing. Again, that's gonna help from a marketing perspective, but from the relationship side of kind of that experience that you're having with that guest, that can be equally as important as well. Oh, man, I am so, I'm so glad I asked that question. I just wrote down. Did I kind of hit what you're, you're, why you're asking? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I think the understanding your customer, that's huge. And the, yes. the one of the first things you said was like, you're not making for everybody. And I think that actually is something that Etsy used to say, or maybe still does say, is that there's somebody for everything that's being made. You'll find your audience. You just have to do the work. And figure it, out, yeah, is it somebody who collects florals? Is it somebody who collects anime drawings? You know, is it somebody who likes something really kind of dark and gothic or Halloween? You know, like, there's there's an audience for everything. So that was a big one I wrote down. And then I would love to circle back to boundaries and share a little story I just read online. Yeah. Um, I follow a Facebook group for ceramic studio owners and operators. And I follow this Facebook group because some of our staff do and because we have a pottery studio on site. And one of the owners, so they're usually very small businesses that own these clay studios, was talking about how she felt like her boundaries just keep getting railroaded, right? How she can't stand up to policies and procedures because she's one person and she doesn't feel like people take her seriously because she doesn't have an institution or the infrastructure to kind of blame it on. And I don't, I don't like that phrase, right? I don't like passing the buck, but uh, I thought it was a really interesting conversation and the Facebook comments were giving some, some really good advice, some kind of not so great advice. Um, but the, the part that I really took away from it was, you know, when you set a boundary and set something that's important to you and that kind of policy, you have to stand firm. And not only do you have to stand firm to teach your customers, you have to stand firm for yourself because especially as one person and as an artist, that burnout situation is real and it can be really difficult to come back from. So I, I even took some screenshots of that Facebook post because I thought it was so interesting. They were talking about um, refunding customers and when a customer is unhappy, how do you handle that? And what does that look like for you? So I think that's really important, especially if you're taking on like one-to-one -one client work, setting those parameters and those boundaries up front, writing out like a memorandum of agreement or a memorandum of understanding and saying like, here's what I'm going to give you and here's how many revisions I'm going to give you and here's what I expect from you, that kind of drafting it up front. And honestly, I know that that... <laughs> can change, right? In the middle of the project, it could be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. We need to negotiate this. But I think protecting yourself as an artist is a huge deal. And it's something that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. So I'm glad you brought up boundaries. It's, you know what, any, every single person in this world should have boundaries for themselves. So then when it starts layering into your business, darn right, you should have boundaries for yourself. And honor and honor what those things are. To your point, get it in writing, get it out in the open, have that discussion. When you don't have them, that's when there's stress. That's when somebody is afraid to have the conversation with somebody about whatever the thing is. Getting really clear and upfront about what that looks like right off the bat. And if people start asking, well, why is that important to you? If you have a good reason, share it. Tell them this is important to me because of X, Y, and Z. But absolutely, I don't, you don't necessarily need to have a large institution behind you to have personal boundaries. That, that is important. And there, it's important to spend some time defining what that is, because that's one of those things where nobody, nobody wants to necessarily sit down and be like, this is really important to me in my stuff, in my business side. These are, you know, whether it's how quickly can I do the art? You know, somebody may reach out to you and say, hey, I want this tomorrow. That's not feasible, you know, and being able to really stand in what that looks like. 
that again, it's it's you reflecting upon what it what it takes. Like, all right, if for you to create whatever you're you're creating takes three weeks, standard three weeks. That's part of again, that's part of a boundary. You know, if you people are calling you at ten o'clock at night to find out what their progress is and you're not open, that's a boundary. So getting clear on what's important to you and how you want to go forward, absolutely. For sure. And if you're feeling like your boundaries are being pressed upon, you probably haven't set them strong enough. Um, and it, it's just, again, that level of self-reflection starts coming in. For sure. I, my team might be sick of me saying this, but I always say, I'd rather be proactive than reactive. That's my whole philosophy. Like I would rather draft these policies and put them in place and put them in writing and communicate them with everybody Absolutely. because it, it actually kind of does the work for you too. You know, it does, it does something where, oh yeah, oh yeah, I agreed to this. And then they know that that's a boundary and that's something they agreed to and that it's just part of doing business. Absolutely. I mean, let's, let's look at the big companies. The big companies have all of those things in place, all of the things in writing. You know, if you go to a store and the price tag says it's $10, very seldom are you up there haggling the price tag, you know? And so absolutely establishing what those are can be they're important across all levels, but being a business of one, you still are, it is, yes, still have those boundaries for sure. Absolutely. And you know what? I feel like I thought of something to say and I lost it. So <laughs> we'll come back to it if it strikes me again. Um, I wrote down also while you were speaking that um, kind of telling your story and sharing who you are as an artist. We did an artist journey with an artist last month. Her name is Jenna Cast, and I think she does that so well. She's got that really kind of worked into her entire process. She's integrated social media and how she does everything. She's taking pictures and videos all day long and sharing who she is right on her website and right in her social media and the way she interacts with her customers. Do you have any specific tips or ideas on how people can share more about themselves or kind of share um, who they are as a part of their artwork? Just start doing it. Like, <laughs> I wish it was I am who I am. <laughs> I, well, I mean, again, I think there might be some work to, to be done. If you're not real sure how you want to express yourself or you don't really know how to even begin doing it, yeah, there might be some work to do it, but start with the things that you find that are really easy to do. Start sharing those bits and pieces. Even reflecting back on if, you know, when somebody asks, well, what do you do? How comfortable are you answering that question um, and sharing that side of those stories? So honestly, like even with me working as a coach, like me kind of defining who those types of people are and then telling people, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, it took some revisions. Like it might, you, it may not roll off your tongue the way you want it to right off the bat, but play with it. Play with the things that you're comfortable with. Play with the things you're uncomfortable with too, because your uncomfortable may have some secret surprise hidden in it that you just have to massage a little bit to get to the thing. So I recommend sharing as much as you feel comfortable, just doing it. Because the more you start sharing, the more you start diving into it, the easier it does become. You know, sometimes people will hide behind those fears and they'll never share the things that they're doing and the things that they're doing are amazing. So you know, there's, there's a level of confidence that can go with it, um, but I'd recommend just, just starting to play with it, starting to have the conversations with people, inviting people in, say, hey, look what I created. If they're like, well, tell me about it, tell them about it, tell them about what it is, show them. Um, and things will start opening up, but don't hold back, you know, try, try to do it in a way that feels again, authentic and aligned for you to start sharing. Um, and just, just play with a little, even if it's just like, this is a picture of the thing I made this weekend. Perfect. Perfect. I know judgment can really start coming in. Like people will start being afraid that they're going to be judged. Again, you're going to find the people that love it. And you're going to find the people that don't. It's just part of you sharing your story, not everybody's going to love you. That's just, that's just how it works. <laughs> so true. So true. I did. I did remember. Oh, oh go ahead, Jen, please. Oh, I was just going to add, uh, just came to mind. Uh, you know, a lot of artists start out doing shows where there's multiple people in a large space and they have a, you know, a booth. Um, and it, 
it's very interesting because I know that, and I don't want to stereotype, but a lot of artists are more introverted than extroverted. And it becomes very clear in a situation like that who your extroverts are. And I think teaching those um, those connecting skills to artists who might be more introverted is so important in a setting like that. I'll tell you, when I walk into an artist's area and I'm not greeted or, uh, you know, they don't connect with me to at least smile or say hello at the minimum, I'm really not, I'm not excited about buying from them. <laughs> um, I mean, there have been times when I thought something was really cool, but I wasn't acknowledged one bit walking in there and I, I just walk away. Um, you know, a few thing. another thing that came to mind, um, just talking about setting boundaries and, you know, it's really important to know yourself, to know what you need. Like, you know, what are those boundaries? How, what is your vision for what this company, this business is going to look like? And even if you can't articulate it into a memorandum of understanding or an agreement, find somebody who can help you articulate it. Um, you know, Carrie has done a lot of work at the Artisan Center. Oh, and Carly and Alicia have been part of this too, actually, and they were both on documenting, you know, the things that need to be documented. And I think the same thing holds true for, for an artist who's on their own, um, is to really try to clarify those things as much as possible, the things that could go wrong. And I know anticipating isn't always the easiest, but anticipate as much as you can, um, especially if you're running some type of studio or something. Um, and the other part was, um, what was the other thing I had thought of about really knowing yourself? Yeah, I guess that was it. Just really understanding, you know, where you're, oh, I know the other thing was um, having a group to connect with. So it can be very isolating to be working on your own in a studio. And a lot of our, um, particularly our ceramics um, participate, our ceramics artists who come to open studio keep coming back because they have folks there that they know and they can talk to and they can get ideas from, bounce off, you know, what do you think of this that I'm working on? Um, and sometimes we forget about that. It can be really lonely just working alone um, to somehow create that group of people who you trust, who you can be honest with and they'll be honest with you um, to get that feedback uh, going. And I think they can help you, right? I, I wrote down while you were talking, I wrote, farm it out. <laughs> you know, you don't always have to be good at everything, right? It may not fit you. It may be something like, oh, I hate doing this. I would rather pay somebody to do my taxes. Or, you know what? I cannot chat with people at an artist booth. Maybe I need to figure out a different way to sell my artwork. Maybe I'm better at writing about myself than I am saying my talking about myself to people. Mm -hmm. So I think you brought up some really good points, Jan. Thank you. Um, the one thing that I thought of while you both were talking was that um, it's really okay to say no. It's really it, it really is okay to say no. Um, I am not a professional artist. I have dabbled a whole bunch. I love to make things. Um, but what I have found in my, my kind of time in making things is that I don't do commissions. I can't do commissions. I cannot be told what to make and when to make it in what colors by a deadline. It's not who I am. So I started posting these kind of floral drawings I was working on one weekend and um, I was really inspired by this bouquet of flowers and I just kept working on it. I cranked out like 15, 20 drawings or something like that. And I will tell you how many messages came rolling in for commissions. And I just kept saying no. And I feel so much better and much more like confident in who I am being able to say, you are welcome to purchase any of these individual drawings that I've already done, or I'm happy to gift them to you really, because I'm making them just because I feel like I need to make them. Um, but I don't, I don't take commissions and I'm comfortable in saying that because I have failed at taking commissions. I have said, oh yes, absolutely. I will do that. And then I realized like two weeks in, I can't do this. It's painful. It is stressing me out. I don't ever want to do this again. And so now I've come to that point where I'm like, you know what? I just say no up front. I feel like everybody deserves a party when they say no. Like when they finally say no, it's so, it can be so empowering. 
And I know a lot of times people will be like, but I can't say no, I need the work or I can't say no because of whatever the reason is. And it's, it's like, you can, because again, the right people are going to come in. And when you say no, you're honoring again, that level of your personal boundaries as to what you can and you can't do. Because Carrie, like you were saying, like if you say yes to a commission piece, you're miserable and you don't wanna do it. Like I even think of it outside this creative realm, like in your everyday life, if you keep saying yes to every certain everything, you become burnt out it becomes too much. You have no joy in doing the things anymore. So no is a very powerful word and everybody should be celebrated when they use it in a way that it works for them. For sure. And I don't mean to like totally dis doing commissions because I think they are really great work for people. And I have um, noticed there's a couple of local artists that are doing commissions really creatively and making them work for them and putting the boundaries in it, which is really cool. So there's an artist, sometimes she joins us here. Um, her name is Shell, Shell the Painter is what she goes by on social media. And I noticed she's doing these, I think she's calling them like stained glass floral bouquet painting. So like if you have a wedding bouquet, she will do a painting of it in her style. And she's got kind of the parameters on it and she has, it's it's a very cool process. And so I think, you know, if you want to be able to take commissions, right, if you need the work or if you've got, you know, these different kind of income streams you're working on, you can be intentional with what those are and you can put boundaries and parameters around them and like, um, or you can put time frames on things. Uh, I referenced Jenna Cast last month. She um, sells prints, but she only does them for like two weeks at a time because she doesn't want to be tied to selling prints 24 seven. She'd rather be in the studio painting those beautiful masterpieces. And that's a boundary for her. So there, that's the best part, right? About a creative business is that creative freedom to make those rules. Well, and you even kind of brought up another thing that I talk to a lot of, um, a lot of creatives that I work with is like understanding what your cycles are to, to your point, like, all right, she's going to sell for two weeks. And then she's going to go create understanding what those cycles are within your business, or even not even from a business perspective, even your creative spirit can be important because there, there is this balance. Again, if you are, if your intention is to have this be a business and you need to sell those things in order to have it be a business, you have to be mindful of, there has to be a, a pause possibly a pause to some of the creative side because you do need to foster that business side as well in order to sell the pieces to have it be a sustainable business. So looking at what are those, how do, what does that flow look like? What are, what are from an energetic perspective too, what is your time where you feel more creative and your time where you don't? And that can vary during the day. It can also vary during the season. So if you know for you, winter is gloomy, and you're, you go into your artist cave and you create all these masterpieces, fantastic. Then you emerge in spring and maybe that's when you start selling. So really, again, reflecting on yourself, know yourself to know those cycles and be intentional about mapping, mapping out your cycle. What does that look like? If you feel inspired and you need to create, that's fine. But then how are you going to, again, wrap back into that business mode too of, of that? Because that's part of the game. If you want it to be something that is sustainable for yourself, there is some intention that needs to go into that business side as well. You made me think about a couple of artists I know that um, are very successful and they have kind of production lines. So they have like, um, you know, it's still custom work that they do, but they've got the process really streamlined so they can crank them out and they know that they are fairly popular and sell really well at markets and things like that. And they kind of production line it and got the pieces all cranked out. And that brings in enough revenue that it frees up their time that they can focus on the work that they really want to be doing. And so if you can figure out something like that too, you know your audience, right? You know your audience, you know what people are buying, you know the price point and what's really selling well and how to get those products to your customer. That can really free you up. You know, doing that legwork on the front end and really the work that not all artists really want to be doing, that that hard work up front can free you up on the backside, right? To have that creative freedom, to be able to indulge that creative inspiration and just be in the studio making work. 
Well, and you know, part of it again goes back to knowing yourself. If it is not your strength to think about all of those things, who do you need to bring in to help you to discover those strengths? You might be the person making all the things yet, but if you need somebody to organize your production line for you so you can get in and create, bring on somebody else to help you do that or, you know, phone a friend, say, "Hey, <laughs> I know you're good at this, but I'm not as good." Like Jan was even mentioning um you know, going to the artist booths and having people not say anything, I want to loop that back into that customer service side of it because that is all about customer experience and engaging with the, the customer. But that's also knowing yourself. And when you need to bring in somebody to help bring that either out of you, um, that can be important. I'm also going to bring in that whole networking component too. Like bring those people in, have everybody support one another in the business because that that can be really powerful with helping you to move this to being what you want it to be. Yeah, and do events with friends or bring family members. Um, one of the first art shows I ever did, and as Jan said, most artists are introverts. I really am. I've gotten pretty good at putting it on, but I am deep down a, truly an introvert. And I'll tell you the first art show I ever did, I brought my mom <laughs> and she is like the world's best saleswoman, right? So she's out there like gathering people and bringing them in and telling them how wonderful I am. And I'm just sitting there having quiet conversations with a few people here and there, like connecting more one-on-one, -on -one, which is what I prefer. And it was great. I'll tell you, I haven't done one since because it was absolutely draining. And I found that it's not something I really love. Um, but yeah, phone a friend, call a family member, especially somebody who like, loves you and loves the work you're doing and really supports you they want they want to do that and they can say wonderful things about you and it doesn't sound like bragging right i also want to just point out what you just mentioned too carrie like you honored your cycle or you acknowledged your cycle like i can't do this it drains me out now other people may be like well i have to do this this is part of my business this is part of what i do they may also realize this drains me all right, perfect. If you're going to go to a show, then realize the next day or two, you might need to just be in bed <laughs> or whatever that is to recharge. Because I, so I, I wouldn't call myself super introverted, but I'm not extroverted, but I can turn it on when I have to. But after, after that, like even today, I taught earlier today and I'm like, all I need is a nap. <laughs> like that's all I need. So honoring what those cycles are, um, after you have to overdo the exertion of um, who you are, that you you might need some downtime. So honor that because you'll burn out if you don't. Absolutely. It brings us right back to boundaries, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and yep. knowing yourself. It all kind of goes together. And I think... I, yeah. Go ahead. No. Go. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think when it comes to working in a creative field, Actually, you know what? When it comes to work in general, we are all human beings, right? <laughs> we all can't be working 24 hours a day. We all have different work cycles and we all have different interests and things that fill us and drain us and so forth. So I think it's just important for everybody. Set those boundaries and kind of know who you are and, and check in once in a while, right? We, I wrote that down really early on. You said that was like a self-reflection and check-in time. It, yes do that. Like, honestly, I spend a lot of time with my clients really taking a look at, I'm kind of wrapping up everything that we've been talking about today. It's what are your values? What's important to you? How are you honoring what your boundaries are? How are, how are your goals or whatever word you want to use to define that? How do those reflect back to those things? And then as you move into your progress as a person, how does that change? You know, your values of what's important to you right now may not be what it is six months from now. So how how is your, your business and your creativity even growing with how you're growing as a person? Because it all, it all changes up. Do you have any um, suggestions for tools or ways to do self-check-in if you are not constantly kind of doing that as a person? Is there something that you would recommend for a way to do that? Yeah. D again, depending on what level of accountability you want, <laughs> you can certainly work with somebody to help you do that. Your networks, again, you know, going back to what Jan was talking about with your networks, that can be a powerful way to even have that be, a, again, a boundary of your group. Like, hey, part of our group is we're going to just check in with everybody, what's going well, 
Where do you need some support? Asking those questions from a moment of self reflection. I, I really, there's a book that I am totally blanking on what it's called right now. Oh if you gosh. think of it, send it later and we'll yeah. post it with the recording. It's called, it's called the passion test. It's a book that okay. I really, really like um, taking a look at every so often, because what it has you do is a lot of deep self-reflection on what is truly important to you. And then once you define what those are, when different things come up in your life, it's kind of just checking back in. Like, is this, is this hitting this thing that I said was important to me before? Does it not hit that? Um, in doing and doing that, or even after you you do a show, just saying, hey, what did I really like about this? What didn't I like about this? How would I do this differently? It's, I really feel like a lot of times to go deeper into self-reflection, sometimes you have to ask yourself a question and then see what comes up. And sometimes it may come up in the form of words, or it may be like a gut check of like, oh, I didn't like anything to do with that. <laughs> so... I went to um, the art preserve by the Kohler Art Museum in Sheboygan on Saturday. I hadn't been there yet. It was really, really cool. Highly recommend it. And they give you a booklet when you get there and it has like a map and it has a bunch of blank pages. But the best part I found, and I promise this ties in, um, they had these little cards that you could put in the book with a little like sticker pocket. And they all had different words at the top of them and one of them was reflect and then it gave you some ideas on how to reflect on the art you were experiencing while you were there and one of the one was one of the points to your point was have a conversation with a friend either talk to somebody you went to the museum with and talk about your experiences what did you like what didn't you like or talk to somebody who's never been there and share some of the things you really loved get other people excited about it a couple of the other prompts on there were you know to journal or to sketch and kind of really focus on, you know, your experience, your individual experience and that kind of internal. Um, I can't remember what the third bullet point was off the top of my head, but I thought it was such an interesting practice for going to a museum because usually you're kind of immersed in it and doing it and then you don't think about it again. So to have those prompts and those kind of reflection time prompts afterwards, I thought was really interesting. Yeah, having that turn into like almost a rhythm, even again, of who you are, um, can be can be important. So even if it's at the end of the day, like taking some moments of reflection on, hey, this is what was really great in my day. These are some things that I feel like I've even like give yourself some pats on the back. Like, I feel like I honored myself in these ways. Like I said, no, yes. <laughs> But having having those moments of reflection as well, because we can always reflect on the things that we know we could do better. Sometimes it's harder to reflect on those things that we're really proud of ourselves for doing. So try to always, I, I recommend, try to keep it positive. What are those things you're really proud of yourself for doing? And even step into that level of gratitude. Today, in one of the classes I was teaching, I asked people, I asked that question, I'm like, what are you proud of yourself that you've done in the last week? And everybody's thinking so hard on what that is. And then I said, all right, now think of something that you would like to have done better. And everybody's like, oh, you know, thinking of all the ideas. So reflect back on that. What are the things you're really, really proud of? What are the, what's the growth that you have, that you're happy to have seen yourself go through? Looking at it from that lens, even you may even notice like your creativity is sparked in a different way. Again, with something that really aligns with you when you start checking in in those proud moments too for sure i am i am on my drive home today i was thinking about this conversation and i kind of turned down a rabbit hole and caught to thinking about next month's artist journey is the feature of our five residents who have been in this program since september with us and i started thinking about the questions i'm going to ask them and one of them i wrote down while i was writing down questions for you is that i'm going to ask them to share one of the things they're most proud of from the year that they've been with us and i started thinking about all the things i know that i'm proud of them for and i'm going to make that list so i can share those things during that time because i want to celebrate them and some of them have had some major accomplishments this year that i'm so proud of but um i'm going to see them all tomorrow and i'm going to tell them that they should prepare to be <laughs> proud of themselves brag a little bit show off a little bit tell people about the things you've accomplished because it's a big deal even if it doesn't feel like it you got to celebrate those small wins. Well, and by practicing that, when you start talking to, again, your customers about what you've done, 
you've already verbalized the things that you're proud of that you've done well. So it starts, again, it starts getting easier when you're, you know, you find those pieces that you're really proud of and you start talking about that. It's going to make it easier, again, when you try to sell some of your stuff, you can talk about those things. Absolutely. For sure. And you can talk about those, those big things you've accomplished, those big milestones you've achieved. Those are huge, you know, getting into a, a big show or selling a huge piece. Like some of those things may not feel big, but they are, and they should be celebrated. So That's where your network too comes in, where, you know, even if, if you're having one of those days and you have an opportunity to connect with the people that support you and they know you're having one of those days, have it, you know, have them tell you what's, you know, what's, in, why you're important to them, all of those things to help shift some of that. It also can be really helpful if you doubt yourself a lot to reconfirm those things that you think you know about yourself, but you doubt yourself in, in whatever the thing is. I'm, I'm literally writing down in my cute little notebook here to surround yourself with people that uplift you, right? Yes. Surround, the people you surround yourself with are, are a big part of your life. And if they're not willing to just like cheerlead you all the way, then you shouldn't surround yourself with them. I, I don't know the actual like fact behind this, but I mean, it is true. People that surround themselves with other people that want their success are going to be more successful. When you surround yourself by people that are constantly bringing you down, pulling you down, it is much harder to take one step forward when everybody keeps telling you you can't do it. When you are around people that tell you you can and help to show you the way, you're going to be more successful. So find your find your group, find your people. And I don't mean just people that are just going to give you compliments all the time, all all over the place. No, heck no. I'm going to challenge you too. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that's exactly what they what everybody needs. You know, is somebody who can say yes, let's celebrate this win, but also, hey, I have an idea. Maybe we could look at this and doing this differently going forward. Or, mm -hmm. hey, I, oops, sorry, I have dogs barking in here. I was going to say something about, um, sorry, it's dinner time at my house and my dogs are <laughs> demanding their kibble. I'm hungry. Yes, thank you to my husband for coming to get them. Um, just being intentional, right? And being, um, sorry, that really threw me for a loop. I'm not used to being interrupted. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about? Surrounding yourself with people that lift you up and check on you, right? And kind of check in with you and are honest with you. That's where I was. Yeah, I mean, if that. you go to a big show and one of your friends sees that you're you're not engaging with customers, you want them to be that person that's like, "What was going on there? Why weren't you talking to anybody?" They're, Absolutely. Yes, they're going to they're going to be your biggest cheerleaders, but they're also going to be those people that are going to challenge you in ways to help you grow. So, now my my logical brain is thinking, how do you find these people, right? And I know we only have 5 minutes, so anybody else on this call, please interrupt and ask questions. Um, but if you have any ideas, Chrissy, on how you find your your people, I would love to hear them. Yeah, I mean that that is like the question, right? <laughs> like how do you how do you create those those deeper levels of connection? And I, I feel like it's it's going to resources like what you offer and just reaching out and saying, Hey, I feel like I'm on an island. Who you know, where should I connect? You know, I, I feel like that can be an important first step. It's one to say like I need people. I need to connect to my people and start trying to look at those networks and those ways of doing that. Social media can be a blessing and a curse and a blessing of it can be, it can help you to find those different people that you need to connect to or start asking around. Like I've been, I don't even know some of these connections that I have made with people, how they have come into fruition, but a lot of it is because I am asking, I'm talking about like what I'm doing, I'm bringing things up. And that's leading me to find the right people. And I think that that part about just reaching out like, oh, I think you would connect great with this person. And then actually saying, hey, so-and-so recommended we chat. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, that is honestly find those people in your world that know all of the people or like are connected to people in very different ways and reaching out to them. Again, some of my connections have come from me saying to 
my people that are connected in very weird ways, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Do you know anybody that would could help me with it? And then all of a sudden be like, oh yeah, I know this person here. Let me bring the two of you together. That's, you know, that's kind of how it works. So being, you know, again, I hate going to go back into sharing your story, telling people what you're doing will also help to lead that in. I absolutely agree. And, you know, there's more formal ways too. I will just touch on. There are lots of formal art groups in this area, in Northeast Wisconsin. There's state groups, there's local chapters, there's lots of those. And um, some of them have group meetings, like monthly meetings. Some of them have group critiques, which I think are super beneficial. And I think those are great places to start, especially if you're really new to it or really new to the community and you have not networked with these artists. Sometimes having like a formal monthly meeting is a great place to start, especially for introverts. You know, it's kind of that easing into it, right? You get to introduce yourself. You can kind of sit back and see how the meetings go and see if there's people in the room that you really align with. You can kind of sample some of the artist groups. Um, but I will tell you too, I completely agree with you. It's it's personal recommendations, right? It's It's finding those people that you kind of vibe with and that you can sit down and we've been chatting for a whole hour and I feel like we're just in a room having coffee, right? Like, I feel like last time we were together, I don't know how long that conversation was because <laughs> you find people that you can just chat with and connect with and you can kind of end up all down these rabbit holes, but then circle it back to goals and values and all of the things we started talking about, which is really cool. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we have a few minutes, so if anybody else on the call wants to ask Chrissy any questions or pop in here, please feel free to do so. Um, I always say that I struggle with leaving the silence, and um, I'll admit, still working on it. Um, but please unmute yourselves and pop in here. Um, Chrissy and I have been dominating this conversa conversation. Jan, I'm so glad you popped in. That was great. Chrissy, are there any? Oh, yeah, I'm glad I popped in too. Um, and, and not, I mean, <laughs> if I can share a little bit, I mean, that that's always great. But um, I think that, you know, there's a lot, I think there's some great synergy coming together too in the community, creating some of those places. Um, I know NEW uh, or the new art space, uh, is that in De Pere, Cary? I can never yep. remember where they are. Um, they've been doing like, group things um, and talk about having two really experienced artists who I think are more focused on like the mid-level person, but hey, wasn't it great to sort of have the person who's done some of it, who's done a lot of it, who you can get a few tips from? You know, I mean, it's an open invitation for anybody to be there at the table. Have they done some things? I think they've done some things around books. Um, yeah, but they're on Facebook, you know, there's sages in the community. They've got different things going on. Um, Artless Bastard has some things they've been doing, I think, including a critique night. Was, are they doing, somebody was going to do a critique night. Yeah, I think Sage was doing a critique night, oh, but okay. you know, I have heard that Artless Bastard's openings are phenomenal for networking and music and kind of creative synergy. I have yeah. yet to make it to one because Algoma to De Pere is quite a hike, but um, I have heard great things about their openings and the kind of yeah. time you can get to interact with artists. There, yeah. I've, I've been to, like, they had um, just even one of their fundraisers, like, that they have offered. They, I mean, Alexis over there is super creative and mm -hmm. really tries to bring in fun with all of all of the stuff sh that she offers so absolutely yeah i think that's a great point you know we can be doing what we do at the artisan center right but there are there is so much going on and i think if you just start showing up start putting yourself out there and really attending those events and starting to talk to other artists that that's huge that can do wonders not only for your creative practice but also for your business I think we are at exactly 6.30. So on that note, Chrissy, do you have anything else you want to say or wrap up with? Not really. I mean, we covered so much <laughs> so much today. Obviously, if people have questions, um, you can reach out to Carrie. She knows how to reach out to me as well. Um, 
But yeah, thanks for having me today. Yeah, thank you so much. I will make sure that we share your website link when we post the recording so that people can reach out to you that way. I think that will be great. I am so appreciative of your time. Thank you for being here with us tonight virtually. Um, yeah, happy Tuesday. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I'm going to click end this meeting and I'll see you guys all again soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.